welcome to another episode of Real South Hunting. We are in the beautiful Colorado Rockies here in Southwest Colorado, San Juan Mountain Range, and it is unreal. Back in like 2007, I met Mr. Jim Griswold. We served on the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation Committee together in Hattiesburg. Mr. Jim always talked about going to Colorado and this place he hunts and how awesome it is. And 2015, we thought it was gonna work out to come. That didn't happen. Fast forward 2023 here, and Mr. Jim calls me up, hey man, somebody just backed out and we got a spot open to go to Colorado, do you want in? Immediately, yes, I want in. No doubt, no questions asked. The bull elk tag is over the counter, so I was gonna uh, put in for the draw and uh, sure enough, I got an email said I got drawn for a cow elk and a mule deer buck. So I, that gave me three tags to come to Colorado with. And I called my brother from another mother, Mr. Brooke Sanders. And I was like, hey man, we got to get in shape. We got to lose some weight. We got to exercise. I'm gonna need you to come film this hunt for me. Brooke didn't hesitate. He said he's in. So I knew right then it was fixing to be on. All right, it is get ready for Colorado time. I think I'm gonna put a brand new scope on my Ultra Mac and the 301 Mac. Look at that logo right there. Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. We're going to work off our top hat trailer today from Endom Trailers in Ellisville, Mississippi. What you doing? Well, I have to take Optimus completely apart. Clean it up, it's real dusty. Looks good with a hawk on it. We got a three by 12 by 56 millimeter we're gonna put on this bad boy. Dang, son. I bet Eliza just jumped out of her britches. Felt like a tank just went off. That's pretty good bore sight, and I'm an inch low and about a half inch to the right. Backup gun. Yep, a little backup action going on. It's worse than that gun. Smell that powder burn. Show y'all how I've been running. Uh oh. This is how I've been getting on that road every day. <laughs> Up and down ain't too bad. It's just got to go right a lot. Pretty close right there. Just inside that other hole. Sixty-eight yards. You hit a big bull out right there. He's going down, no doubt. Now it's time to get on the road and head out to Colorado. Twenty-four hour drive. Brooke gets off work on a Wednesday afternoon at five. We load the truck up. We're on the road by six p.m. On the way out to Colorado, we were coming through Dallas and it got a little bit sketchy. We hadn't had any rain in Mississippi and we're just begging for some rain. But Dallas is getting flash flooding and we're driving through there at like 1 a.m. It is flooding. Got them shorts on, you're gonna make it all the way up there in them shorts. And then the trucks. <laughs> Man, 
book gets behind the wheel, I get a little nap. It starts getting daylight about the time we get into New Mexico and you talk about beautiful country, my goodness. Welcome to Colorado, she said. We are in Colorado, oh Lord. Scenic overlook, one half mile. Look at that view. Oh my. Stop. And we not got into torrential flooding in Dallas. We'd have made it a lot better. My nephew up 50 miles north of Dallas, he said they got 4.7 inches of rain. Wow. Made it up to Monarch Pass and stopped there, stretched our legs for a few minutes. From there, we were only like an hour left to where we needed to go. stop and get my over-the-counter bull elk tag for unit 62. Now we're headed down to Ridgeway, which is about 25 miles from Montrose. We're going to stay the night there in a hotel, let our bodies get adjusted to all this, and get a good night's sleep before we head up the mountain tomorrow. So we got a good steak that night, met the outfitter that we we're gonna be hunting with. Him and his wife came and ate with us. Just got to meet all the guys that were in camp. We were hunting with Mr. Jim Griswold. We had Mr. Jackie, Mr. Robert and Gary Lane, Mr. Chad Smith, and Mr. Carl Parker. What are we thinking this morning? We're thinking it's 35 degrees outside. We got a little nippy. Got a good frost on the day here. Yeah. I had to get my boots out of the trailers like Anthony did. Like the days of the day we've been looking for for about, what, four years? Yeah. Well, yeah. 23 minutes. Count down and down. <laughs> Count down the For green. breakfast? Right yeah. <laughs> Kate's place was good. Met the expect expectations and what everyone says, that's where you need to go. That's right. Abe's got business handled now. He's ready to hunt. I think I about got it handled, maybe, possibly. What's Did you pay for us already? Yeah. Man, dude, you're on the ball on this paying for our meals. Man. I'm going to start making sure my don't, phone rings every time when it's worry. time to pay. This, this trip's going to cost you. Don't worry. <laughs> we start hunting in the morning. Season opens. We head back up to Montrose and head out toward Gunnison to a gun range. One more time. Hey, we're from Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi exactly. is the second home. <laughs> we're good with that. Much better. Hey, yeah. no, you got to hit the uh, buffalo. He said he's got to hit the buffalo, no. huh? <laughs> no, I don't, because I'm not going to go try to build that. Did you hit the buffalo? Yeah. Buffalo is 500. I think that is. Yep. Yeah. I shoot Optimus a couple times, and it wasn't hitting exactly like I wanted. Made a few adjustments to the hawk scope, and we were ready to rock and roll. All right, all. Yeah, Got it. A little high the money. All the money. Right, we've been waiting on this moment to head up the mountain. We are headed to drop the trailers off and head on up to where the camp is, around 9,000 feet. Get all our gear ready for the hunt. We start hunting in the morning. I'm excited. Just don't do it just the pictures definitely don't video is going to look a little better but to actually see this in person is unbelievable we're only going to take a few vehicles up we got a couple of old suburbans that they hunt out of i'm taking my truck carl's taking his mr jim's going to take his Oh, a little 
would like y'all staying a little we while. We stay a little while too, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we ready. Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is kind of, uh, I guess you can call it the base camp. Down a little bit lower here where the barn is. Got the Suburbans fueled up. And now we're about to load up and head up the mountain to the to the camp we're gonna be staying at for the next few days and a little over an hour drive. This is home for the next few days. Can't wait to get out and start hunting in the morning. I think we're at about 9,000 feet right here where we're at. This will be much better, here. much better. We got the fire going now. After we get everything ready to go hunting the next morning, we sit down and have a wonderful meal. This is home cooking up on the mountain, baby. Our first morning to hunt is here, and I'm telling you, it's like Christmas morning for me. And like a little kid, you know, you can't hardly wait till Christmas morning and get in there and open up your presents. Well, our presents is we're getting to go chase elk and mule deer all over this beautiful country. Bad news is, it's coming up blizzard. Well, things look a little different this morning. Got us a little snow this morning. Ready yes, or what? Watch out, everybody. Bye. Bye, you guys. Hang on. Coming down. It's rough out here right now. I mean, you just slack up a little bit. We saw a bunch of cows. We saw some mule deer, just a couple of does and yearlings. Walked about eight miles, it felt like, up and down these hills and in these canyons.
almost killed a cow out. We were close. We were real close. Golly, I kicked, kicked the safety off. And man, I just, I needed like two more seconds. His button on dry clothes. We forgot to bring extra dry clothes. I'm right there looking mean at us. While we were sitting there looking at these mule deer, we kept hearing these elk bugle back up the mountain behind us. And our guy, he was telling us, he's like, man, them elk are gonna come. They're in this field every day. So as it gets close to dark, I hear something running. I was like, bro, there's something coming. It kind of got quiet and then all of a sudden we heard them running again. And man, we looked up and three cow elk jumped the fence, come out in the field, boom. Then they start walking right to us. All of a sudden, here comes a bull. And all of a sudden, the cows got about 50 yards from us, and I think the wind swirled, and they took off. I told Brooke, I was like, I'm about to shoot one, I'm about to shoot one. They get across the field, they get out to about 220 yards, kind of quartering away. Yeah. 
So I wasn't able to get another shell in her, but we watched her go over there and lay down. So we knew she was hit good. Gets close to dark, the guy comes in, you know, he, was, he called us and I told him what had happened. And he's like, well, I'm gonna drive over there to where she is. He drives a truck over there and she stands back up, kind of walks over toward the fence. So he backs out and he's like, hey man, we need to just wait till in the morning, come back and we'll find her. She'll be laying right there. 